Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. I consider it an honour to speak to this condolence motion on behalf of many people across the Krangamite electorate who have been touched by the untimely death of Philip Hughes. It really has been incredibly moving to see the tributes over the past week. I know just looking at the cricket bats outside the parliament here and outside the homes of so many local people in my electorate. I visited one of my good friends, Patrice Savage, the other day and uh, her boys love playing cricket and there was the cricket bat outside her home. Later today, the Maxfield community and the Cricket family will join together to farewell this inspirational young man. I wish Philip's family and friends all the very best as they come to grips with what is an utter tragedy at this very, very difficult time. His death has not only touched friends, family, coaches, cricketers, both young and old, but people from all walks of life from all corners of Australia and around the world. I think perhaps, Madam Deputy Speaker, there are a number of reasons why Philip's death has particularly reverberated so strongly. He was so incredibly young, just days out from his 26th birthday. And I think his death is a poignant reminder that one cruel twist of fate is all that it takes to take someone away that we hold so dear in just such an instant. I think one of the things that we feel, and there are so many people across Australia who love their sport and who love their cricket, and we, we watch and admire cricketers uh, across the nation, as we have for many, many years, with such a degree of emotion. We, we watch the successes and the failures, and there is a very deep connection with, with the emotions of the players, and I think it's been particularly difficult to watch Philip's teammates come to terms with his passing uh, without deeply feeling that loss ourselves. Uh, Philip Hughes was capable of playing world-beating cricket. He had made two test centuries against South Africa and one against Sri Lanka, as well as two one-day international centuries also against Sri Lanka. And who could forget his memorable partnership with Ashton Agar in England in July last year? Ashton Agar stole the show that day with a score of 98 on debut, an incredible effort, but it would not have been possible without the leadership and the level head of Philip Hughes, who finished the innings unbeaten on 81. In first class cricket, Philip maintained an average of 46.51 with 26 tonnes and 46 fifties. Australians love an underdog and there would have been few things sweeter than to see this young man make his return to the test team. The first test of the summer against India was due to start tomorrow. But for a few millimetres, Philip Hughes might have had his chance to finally cement himself in the national team. That we will no longer see him strapping on the pads and striding to the crease is uh, a very sombre thought. Madam Deputy Speaker, I just at this point want to reflect on the words of Prime Minister Tony Abbott, who said a number of days ago, people are not supposed to die playing our national game. Sport is supposed to engender pride, not grief. To Philip's family, to his friends, to cricketers young and old, uh, this is a very, very sad loss for our nation and a loss that has reverberated around the world. Rest in peace, Philip Hughes, 63, not out forever.